Okay. Can you hear me? Is my mic on? Yep. Yeah, now it's on. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay. We're having some resolution problems, so it's a little small. Um, my name is Iris Finkelstein, and I have my colleagues here today with me, Ohad Shamir and Alexei Weil, and we are all from uh, Nokia CloudBand. We're here today to talk to you about our project Vitrage, or how to organize, analyze, and visualize your OpenStack cloud. So before we go into the details of what Vitrage really is, I want to take you on a little journey. So hopefully this starts, exactly. Again, I apologize for the size of this, but we're going to dive into a very sophisticated cloud environment. Now this is a demo that was actually produced by our Cloud Innovation Center at Nokia, and it's intended to simulate a large service provider's distribu distributed architecture. Okay, and in this cloud environment, we can perform various types of operations, we can do full lifecycle uh, management, um, and uh, do end-to-end uh, -end solutions, service level orchestration, and so on and so on. And if we dive a little deeper under the city to what you're seeing right now, we can see the physical infrastructure of our cloud environment. And we can actually zoom in on all of these servers and see exactly which server is connected to which virtual machine, and so on. And what's really important about the simulation is that you can see that we, we can see both the physical and the virtual layers at the same time. Okay, and that's really important and we'll talk about it later when we talk about Vitrage. So going back up to the city, each one of these cities that you see here actually represents a data center or a cloud environment. And in the cities, you can see that we have city blocks. Each one of these city blocks actually represents a virtual network function or an application. And on the city blocks, we have buildings. So each of these buildings is actually a virtual machine or an instance. And you see that the buildings vary in size. So the variation in size is actually the amount of resources used for each of these virtual machines, okay? And now this is a video of an actual demo or simulation, but in the simulation we can toggle these resources for the virtual machines between CPU usage, memory, storage, and so on, okay? So if you're a network operator and you have this highly distributed and modular architecture, then you're doing application and data modeling and you're doing service chaining and you're doing um, orchestration and shared data layers and so on and so on. So you can perform a lot of tasks on this cloud environment. But you need the right tools to be able to uh, perform all of, these, um, all of these tasks. Okay, so when we're looking at this environment and you see that it's highly distributed many cities, many cloud environments, okay? Let's just go back for a second and use this to simulate an imaginary scenario. So if you recall, a minute ago, I talked about the physical infrastructure. So let's just imagine that in this physical infrastructure, we had a failure, okay? A failure in a switch, for instance. So you can imagine how this goes. You would have a failure, a connectivity failure in your physical switch and that would lead to a connectivity failure in your physical host. And in turn, that would lead to a failure in the connectivity to the public network uh, from your virtual machine, and that would lead to the application being con uh, disconnected from the virtual machine, and so on and so on. You get the picture, so it's utter chaos at this point. And you can imagine that we, if we have these failures happening in each one of these data centers, then multiple connectivity issues um, happen. So if you're a network operator, you have absolutely no way of knowing what actually happened, right? So maybe you would get an alert on your physical switch, but that's just one alert. So what happens next? What did the physical switch actually affect? Do you know what other components of your network were affected? Do you know what are the implications? Do you know how to fix it? And even if you do know how to fix it, do you know that what you're fixing doesn't compromise the other affected elements that you don't know about? So, so again, we're simulating a telco cloud environment here. And in a telco cloud environment, these things can happen and multiply upon themselves. So again, if you're a network operator, you don't know what happened in your network right now. And that's really what Vitrage is all about. Um, 
going on. I, I've had this question come up to me several times during the last couple of days, so I'm just going to take a pause and explain what vitrage is and why we named this project uh, vitrage. So vitrage is a stained glass window, and a stained glass window is made up of many pieces of colored and translucent glass, and if you're just looking at them as piles on whatever, then they don't mean anything, but if you put all of them together, then they make up this beautiful window uh, that you can see through, and so on and so on, so you get the picture. What vitrage actually is, is taking all of these pieces of information and putting them together and providing you with a window that allows you to gather insights about your system. So at CloudBand, when we started about five years ago, we were thinking how can we help service providers improve service agility, improve their operations, reduce their costs, and so on. So basically we were talking about network function virtualization of course. And if we're talking about network function virtualization, then how do we do that? So if we do the switch from hardware-based network functions to virtual network functions, and we add a shared off-the-shelf infrastructure, then we have the ability to reduce lead times for operators, and we have the ability to increase automation to the level that we want. Okay? But all of this requires a very extensive tool set, and that's what we've been really concentrating on CloudBand for the last five years. Recently, we identified that there is a gap in this tool set, and this gap relates to what I was talking about when I showed you this video. How do service providers actually understand, actually monitor and analyze everything that's happening in their system, and most importantly, how do they visualize it? And visualization is a big part of, um, of vitrage. And when we were thinking of this tool set and how to build it, we were thinking of what would we use to be able to build Vitrage, what was the right way uh, to go. Now at CloudVan, we've been using open source basically from day one, so that's the no-brainer. But over the last couple of years, we've also begun to contribute to uh, open source. So again, when we were thinking of uh, Vitrage, it was pretty obvious that it needed to go uh, open source. And we're very happy and very excited that we actually decided to do Vitrage on OpenStack and contribute it to the community. Um, and that is it for my part, and I'm going to hand it over to Ahad, who will go a bit more into the details of what Vitrage actually does. Thanks, Eris. So, hi, my name is uh, Ohad. I'm product manager in Cloud and uh, Nokia. And I want to start with a short uh, story. So imagine that you are responsible for operating an application. You are coming to, to your office in the morning. You take a look and you see new alarms on your screen. You're getting closer to, to the screen. And And can you? And you actually see that you have new three new alarm. So the first one is VM ICPU load. The second one is host connectivity failure, and the third one is ICPU load on host number two. Now we are trying to, to figure out what really happened. What is the status of my application? What is the status of, of my system? And what are the relationship between those three new alarms? And it's really hard to do that. It's really hard to, to figure out those answers. So I will take you behind the scenes and let's see what was really happened. So this is the, the real picture. So actually, you can see that we have two major failures. So we have switch down connected to, to host number one causes the VM on, on host number one to be down, affected my application. And I have another failure on host number two, ICPU load, which affect the performances of VM number three. So now I can see the, the old picture. And you can see that. Actually, I'm missing few alarms, and I'm missing 
the relationship between those alarms. So imagine now that I can give you this information, and this is exa exactly what Vitvaraj is trying to do. So systems today are getting more and more complex. There is a barrier between the physical and the virtual uh, layer, and there are many, many gaps, monitoring gaps. There is no one monitoring tool, so either it's OpenStack, either it's external tool that can provide the complete picture of your system, of your cloud. The bottom line is that it's really, uh, really hard to, to know what is really going on. So what are the challenges? What, what Vitrage is trying to, to provide? So Vitrage is trying to provide holistic and complete view of, of uh, the system to, to reflect the relationship between the different entities, which is, will enrich the statuses and the, and the alarms for your systems and help you to, to understand the root cause of the failures. And different customers, different users need to configure their system differently and we try to support uh, different configurations. So before, before getting into the details of the Vitrage component, I, will, I want to, to take a short example to, to show what are the actions that Vitrage will take. So let's take the iCPU load on the host. So you get iCPU uh, load failure configured on AODH, for example. You set a threshold, the threshold was crossed and now we, we get the alarm. We try to get these alarms, and hopefully the, the, the status of the host is also uh, already modified to be suboptimal. If not, Vitrage will do it. And Vitrage actually raises deduce alarms. So what is deduce alarm? Deduce alarms are alarm that is not directly observed. So the deduce alarm is alarm on the instance. So we know that there is a failure on the host. We want to raise the deduce alarms on the instance because we know that the instance would be affected from that failure. The second action that Vitage will take is to modify the, the state of, of this instance to be suboptimal because it might be suffered from performances issue due to the uh, CPU failure. And, and last uh, action is to to connect these two alarms with a link that will say that alarm number one causes alarm number two. So these are the, the three actions that Vitrage will take in this simple example. So now let's go into the requirement list, into the Vitrage component. So first, we need extendable input, input uh, sources in order to, to provide holistic view of your system, you need as much as possible data sources. Each data source brings more and more information, more and more data about the status of the resources, the relationship between the entities and the, and the alarms. We need to, to have fast response, so we try to support both pull and push notification. And Currently, we, we support uh, different uh, data sources. It could be OpenStack data sources, such as Nova Cinder, Neutron, Salometer. It could be statics configuration file, for example, to configure how the switches are connected to, to the host. And it could be external monitoring tools like Nag Nagios and, and Zabbix. Second uh, requirement is to have initiative uh, modeling of cross-layering relationship. And for that, we have the vitrage graph. So the system state is represented as a proprietary graph. It's very intuitive modeling of the relationship. The entities are the vertexes. So each vertex could be either a resource or an alarm. And the edges are the relationship between those entities. So, and every vertex and every edge could has additional properties like state, ID, name, and you can see it's, it's very intuitive modeling. 
Next one, we need to have configurable business logic. In order to, to do that, Vitraj has to, to react to any change in the graph. So every time we have a new instance or new alarms, it's reflected into the Vitrage graph. It's, it's actually added to the Vitrage graph. And then we have the Vitrage evaluator, which listening to the graph and upon each event, it's evaluate which are the, the relevant scenarios and, and what action it needs to take. The scenarios are stored as a, a template. We call it Vitrage template. It's a YAML file, very human readable. And you can see in, the, in a short example, a condition, alarm on the host and host contains instance, then the action would be set the state of the instance to be suboptimal. So it's very readable, very easy to, to configure it, and we use these templates to, to, to hold our scenarios. Next requirement is we want Vitrash to, to notify other projects on, on the insight we have. So if, if, we, we, if Vitrash knows that a state should be changed, or we want to raise the due salam, we want to also to, to notify to, to other projects like AODH, uh, maybe Nova, Cinder, Neutron. And last one, we, we have uh, REST APIs and, and CLIs to expose the, uh, the insights from Vitrage, to expose the topology, to expose the deduce alarms and state, and to expose the root cause analysis. We have Horizon plugins uh, uh, screens to show the topology, the alarm list, the, the entity graph, and also the, the root cause, and Alexei will, will present it in a, in a minute in the demo. So putting it all together, let's take a look on the Vitrage high-level architecture. So we have the data sources. Currently in Mitaka, we support Nova, Nagios, Statics Configuration, AODH, Cinder, and Newton. We are planning to add more uh, data sources in the future. The, data so the, the, the information from the data sources in the, is injected and reflected in the Vitrage graph. We have the evaluator and the template that are listening to the graph and evaluate and execute uh, the action based on the, the relevant scenarios. We have the notifier to notify other projects, and we have the UI API. So I think that, that now it, uh, it's really a good time to, to move to Alexei to present a live demo of uh, Vitrage. Thank you, Ad. Hi, guys. Uh, first of all, I will uh, apologize because uh, our uh, dev stack uh, crashed about an hour ago uh, when we tried to, to configure the display settings for this computer. Then I uh, raised the dev stack like about a, a half an hour ago. So hopefully everything will be all right. If not, you can always come to our booth in uh, the marketplace and see it all working. I will start. So, uh, what we will see today? Today we will see two, a demo of two use cases in Vitrage. Um, in the first use case, uh, let's say we have a user that defined uh, an, an AODH alarm, uh, a threshold AODH alarm in, in AODH uh, of CPU usage above 0%, for example, uh, on a specific instance. Uh, the CPU usage above 0% is not a real use case. It's, uh, it's, ju it's just so we'll have a quick alarm in AODH. For those of you who aren't familiar with uh, AODH, AODH is the alarms engine in Silometer. Um, here on the right, we can see part of our uh, compute topology. We can see that we have the, the OpenStack cluster. The OpenStack uh, open cluster consists 
contains the zones, each of the zones contains the hosts, and each of the hosts contains the, the instances under that host. Now let's go to the Horizon UI. Okay, sorry, go to the horizon. Uh, first of all, I will show you that why it doesn't show it. Uh, I changed to the to the web browser, and it doesn't and doesn't show it. Sorry. Second desktop. Can you help me, please? Sorry, sorry for the trouble. Thank you. Can you bring up all the I want to switch all the time between the browser and the presentation. I see. This is one desktop, and this is the other okay. desktop. So your best bet is just to drag this onto the other desktop. How do I drag it? Just like, like yeah. Like this? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Where are you? Mm. You may have okay. to just leave Fine. your uh, presentation then. Okay, how do I leave it? You'll have to exit out the program. Uh -huh. I think it's taking over the second desktop. Okay. Oh no, shit, I closed the part. Can you see? You'll have to drag it in. You see how there's a second desktop there? Okay. You so just need to drag that onto. Oh, your computer doesn't want to do it. Maybe try dragging it to the left. Oh, no way. All right, there's one more thing. Can you open your display settings again in here? Hit mirror displays right there. Okay. Sorry. So we see. Uh, sorry that we see it like a, in a bad display uh, manner. Uh, we can see that we have uh, three, uh, three instances, uh, four instances in our uh, dev stack. We see that uh, three are running and one is suspended. Now I will go to the Vitrage tab. Here we can see that we have uh, three sections: the topology section, which uh, where we can see the different uh, hierarchies of the topology, the alarm section when we can see all of the alarms in Vitrage, and the entity graph, where we can see the whole Vitrage entity graph with all its entities and the connections between the entities. I will go to the topology section. Here we can see that we have our Sandburst representation of the compute topology. In the Sandburst representation, uh, each segment in the circle represents uh, resources of the same type Entities of the same type of resources, for example, in the inner, uh, the inner segment represents the open type cluster. The next segment represents the zones in the cluster. The next segment represents the host in each of the zones. And the last segment represents the entity, the instances in each one of the hosts. Here we can see that most of the, that most of the entities are green, which means that they are running. And we see that one of the entities is gray, which we saw before that one, is, that one of the instances is suspended. I can click on each one of the entities, for example, this one, and we can see, sorry for, uh, for the presentation, it's because the whole uh, screen is like cropped. So you can see the, the small uh, sunburst is, is supposed to be up, so you can understand where exactly you are in the big, sun, in the big sunburst. I clicked on the Nova host entity, and on the left we can see its details, the state, the name, and everything, and we can see all of the alarms on this uh, entity. We can see that we have uh, one alarm on this uh, host. Now I will go to, to the command line, as we talked before, that I will uh, raise a threshold alarm of CPU usage above 0% uh, on, on one of the entities. I will raise it. Now, I will go back to the presentation. Uh, sorry that it looks like this. And now, 
we'll see what is really happening in vitrage. So what happens in vitrage? Uh, AUDH raises the alarm, vitrage receives the alarm from AUDH and adds it to the graph. When uh, vitrage uh, connects the alarm to the resource, then the vitrage evaluator runs and it checks if there are any matching scenarios in the templates. In our case, I have defined the template that says that if I have an AUDH alarm on an instance, then change its state to suboptimal. Now we'll go back to the Horizon UI and we will see what has happened. Okay, I will refresh the page. And we can see that VM1 now is uh, yellow. I will press on it. We can see that its state is suboptimal and it has one alarm on it. So what we have seen for now, we have seen that we have raised an alarm in ODH of CPU usage above some uh, percentage and we changed the state of this uh, instance to suboptimal. Although the, the Nova is not aware of this, pro of this problem and the, the state in Nova of this uh, instance is still running, although it has, although it has this problem. Uh, now we'll go back to the pr presentation. Okay. Sorry, I need to play it again. So here we can see a, a template of this kind of use case of the OEDH. Uh, each template consists of uh, two main parts, the definitions part and the scenarios part. Uh, the scenarios part uh, defines the business logic in a human readable way, as we said before. Here we can see that uh, when we have an AUDH alarm on instance, then set the state of the instance to suboptimal. Very easy to understand. Uh, the condition string that we have here is defined in the definitions section. Uh, the definition section defines the entities and the relationship between the entities. If we'll have more time in the end, uh, I will explain it in more detail. Uh, now we'll go to our second use case. <coughs> In the second use case, let's say we have a physical switch failure uh, and we'll see wh what vit uh, Vitrage does with this kind of data. To do this, we have a data source uh, from Nagios. We take the data from Nagios. Uh, uh, Nagios is a lower level monitoring system for those of you who aren't familiar with it, which can monitor physical and virtual layers. Let's go to the uh, Nagios UI, which we have here. Here you can see the Nagios UI. Here we can see that we have uh, two components, the host, which we have, and the test of it, and the switch component. I will go to the switch component, uh, and I will manually simulate uh, a switch failure on one of the tests. I will go to this test, for example. I will change its state to warning. Okay, so now let's see again what is happening in Vitrage. Nagios raises an alarm and uh, Vitrage receives the alarm. When Vitrage receives the alarm, it adds the alarm to the graph. When Vitrage connects the alarm to the switch, then it checks if there, are any scenario, if, if there are any matching scenarios in the templates. In our case, I have defined a template which says that uh, if I have an alarm on a switch and the switch is connected to the host, then perform the, follow, the following three actions. One is raise the deduce alarm on the host. B, change its state to error. And three, add a causal a causal re relationship between the alarms. Now, when the, the deduced alarm on the host is added to the graph, again, the vitrage evaluator runs and checks if there are any a, a matching scenarios in the templates. In our case, again, we have defined that we have 
that if you have an alarm on a host, which is connected to an instance, then raise a deduce alarm on the instance, change its state to suboptimal, and add the causal relationship. So now we'll go to the arbitrage UI, and we'll see what is, going, what is happening. Here we can see that we have uh, the host and the, in and the different instances in red. One of the hosts is still gray because in our case, we have defined in our uh, YAML files that in our case, uh, the suspended state, as we can see here, is worse uh, state than error. Each one of you can define it uh, in, uh, for your use case however you want. So I will go to the Nova host and I will see that its state is error. We can see that we have another new uh, alarm on it. And as well as, as on the instances, we can see that its state is error and the, the alarm that we have on this instance. Now I will go to the sections alarm, to the alarm section, sorry. And here we can see all of the alarms that we have in vitrage. We can see that we have alarms in, in vitrage from AODH, from Nagios, the deduced alarm that vitrage is raising, now let's look on one of the alarms, the, the, the alarm that I just raised, the uptime alarm. We can see that for each one of the alarms we have the, its name, the, the resource on which it was risen, the, the, the ID of the resource, the severity of the alarm, the type of the alarm, which means uh, from where the alarm came from, and we can see the RCA of the alarm. In the RCA of the alarm, I will zoom in, we can see that we have uh, the alarm on the switch, which caused the alarms on the host or the different hosts if you had, or the different hosts if you had more, and it caused the deduced alarms on each one of the instances that we have in the host. This way, you can understand in a much better and quicker way that if you have many alarms, what will happen and what you need to, to, to do in order to solve it. Again, I will sort it by uh, resource type. I will go to the RCA of the instance, for example, and here we can see for the instance itself what really happened. We see that we have an alarm on the instance, which was caused by an alarm on the host, which was caused by an alarm on the, on the switch. Again, this way, it is a very easy and quick way to understand what is going on. I will go uh, to our last, uh, to our last uh, section. Again, sorry, it's, uh, it looks a bit uh, weird because of the all resolution problems that we have. Here we can see the whole vit uh, vitrage entity graph. You can see that uh, we monitor, as we said before, we monitor the Nova host, we monitor uh, VM. In on the left, you can see it's the, the details of each one of the entities. You can see that we monitor Nova instance, we monitor Nova uh, neutron port, neutron network, cinder uh, volume that we have here. Uh, I will find it. Here we have a, a cinder volume. You can see the whole entity graph and the connections between the graph. You can see the alarms, the different alarms. And in this way, again, you have one place which uh, collects the data from many data sources. And you can see the whole, the, uh, whole system in this graph and the connections between uh, the different entities. So you will have much more knowledge of what is really going on in your uh, in your system. I don't have, uh, I think my time is up, so I will give it back to, to Ohad. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, Alexei. I, I want to, to finish with what is next. So we saw what, what is currently we have in, in Vitrage and Okay, what, what is next? What we are planning for, for Newton? So we want to, to add more data sources. As I said before, we want to add a, a, a driver for, for it, maybe for Monasca, for Zabbix, uh, which is an external uh, monitoring tools. Another thing that we want to, to add is the integration with, 
with other projects in, in OpenStack. So currently, the deduced alarms and deduced states are something that internal in Vitrage. We expose it via APIs. We expose it in, in our UI. But we, we don't modify, actually, the, the state of, of Nova. Uh, and we want to, to work on the integration with such a project like Nova Neutron Cinder that they will take the, the insight from Vitrage and actually modify the, the state of the resources uh, or everything that can be, can be used from Vitrage. Uh, next, we want to, to do alarm aggregation. You, can, you may get a lot of alarms that connected to, to, to one failure, or you want to, to group it uh, by resource, etc. So we want to add this functionality to Vitrage. The, we want to, to add uh, more templates and, and use cases. So Vitrage is coming with a set of out-of-the-box templates. You don't need to, to, to start from scratch. It's, it's something that we, we, we provide the, the common use cases, and each one can, can edit it or add his, his own uh, a new template. And last one, currently Vitrage support Network X. It's in-memory graph database. It's great for dev stack, but if you want to, to move to production and to more uh, uh, deployment environment, you, you, you may also want a persistent uh, graph database. So we want to, to add this uh, functionality too. Uh, we, are con we are considering uh, Neo4j or Titan as a persistent graph database. So my last topic is to talk about a bit about NFV. So Vitrage is a, is a project, root cause analysis project, good for everyone, good for enterprise, good for IT, but it's also good for NFV, and it's perfectly fit to NFV. As Iris mentioned in the beginning, we are cloud band. We are dealing with NFV for five years. We know the requirement for NFV and Vitrage will build to, to fit perfectly the, the requirement for NFV to provide this correlation between the, the three layer, between the physical to the virtual to the application layer, to give a fast response to, 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 to have a, a accurate and fast troubleshooting in order to recover from, from a failure in the system. We have a good match with ATNV requirement and OPNV requirement, and I want to mention the Doctor project. Doctor is a, a fault management project in OPNV. We are working together with them. Actually, Vitrage is a reference implementation to the inspector component of a Doctor, and I invite you to, to come uh, today and to listen to, to our next session, joint session with, uh, with Doctor. We will talk there a bit more about how Vitrage is implementing the doctor requirement for OPNV. So last, what I want you to remember from, from this about Vitrage, so we introduced Vitrage, the new project in, in, in OpenStack, and if you have to remember three things, so these are the, the three main functions of Vitrage. So Vitrage provides holistic view of your system, Vitrage enrich the alarms and the states of your cloud, and Vitrage provide the root cause analysis to know what was the root cause of the failures. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we, we can take uh, one or two questions, if someone has uh, questions. Um, can you send the alerts to an external monitoring system like Zabbix instead of using the Horizon view? You you mean to to notify external uh, monitoring tools? Yes. So the architecture supports that. It's, it's actually to write a, another notifier to, to notify not just a OpenStack a project like Nova, Cinder, etc., but external tools, so it's, it should be supported. Uh, it's just a matter to, to write this uh, driver. The question is, does it support uh, such an API? Oh, to notify it. Yeah. Uh, 
Hello. Um, does Vitraj use any of the APIs maybe to cloud band? Can you repeat? Uh, is CloudBand used in Vitrage at all? Yes. So CloudBand infrastructure software product will will use Vitrage as part of of its installation. Okay. Did you was in your demo? Did you use CloudBand or was it no? Purely? The demo was pure open stack. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you have any plans to uh, add monitoring for containers? Monitor for Mo monitoring for uh, Docker containers, which might be running on NOAA VMs. We, we have no current plan for, for Newton. This is something that absolutely we, we should consider for, for the future. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>